Well, with another AEW pay-per-view in the books, they produced their latest pay-per-view, AEW Dynasty, in what's sure to deliver three main event matches that I think will go down as candidates for match of the year, certainly within the company, but also within the sport of pro wrestling. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jose Ramos Jr. And if you're a fan of pro wrestling as much as I am, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe in order to follow and keep up to date with all the weekly wrestling content that is produced on this channel. Now, I know many pro wrestling fans, especially on the AEW side of the spectrum, were expecting this to be an all-time classic pay-per-view due to the sure amount of talent and experience that this roster has had up until this point. Obviously, you start with the main event. It was the AEW World Heavyweight Champion, Samoa Joe, defending his title against Swerve Strickland. And it was a very pro-Swerve crowd. A lot of people were on his side and were calling for the coronation of him as the AEW World Champion. Over the past few months, he's really solidified himself as one of the top stars within All Elite Wrestling. And I'll speak for myself, seeing him come out Black Panther and all, I thought was just tremendous. Not only did it demonstrate a level of importance of him being the first black main eventer in AEW, and essentially, spoiler alert, the first black world champion in AEW, and also ascending him now as the king of AEW, essentially. So to see him grow from what we saw in NXT as Isaiah Swerve Strickland, now in AEW, and how he's gone over organically with the audience, not only through his work in the ring, his theme music, his character work, and now ultimately being rewarded with the AEW World Championship. Seeing him against Samoa Joe, and in my opinion, he didn't he didn't fail. Not only did he stick in there with Samoa Joe, but he looked like he belonged. Like I said, the character work, the in-ring work, it translates. And I think we're in for a great amount of matchups. A great story would, would swerve now as the world champion. And I'm curious to see who his first opponent is going to be. I myself in my predictions video, which you can check out in a link here, you can see that I predicted towards the end of the pay-per-view, we would see some kind of interference or some kind of representation of a hangman out of page, perhaps, just because of the feud that they had over the last fall. I also kind of suggested what if MJF came back, but clearly he's not 100% yet, so we'll hold that off as long as we can, or as long as he needs, really. But the significance that AEW has, not only in crowning Swerve Strickland as the champion, but the significance that it serves in terms of the roster. This is a guy that's earned his spot. He had multiple death matches last year, a tag team title run with Keith Lee a couple years earlier, and just the work, the growth from him as a babyface, to now a heel, to now a babyface again. He's someone that the crowd has organically gotten on the side of. And it's important for, for AEW to carry on this momentum and find him some quality opponents as a means to develop a memorable and successful world title reign. I do think ultimately we're going to look back at that Samoa Joe title reign almost as a transition phase. At the time of MJF, when he was the world champion, Swerve Strickland was gaining momentum. People were already crowning him as the next AEW World Champion. And ultimately, Samoa Joe would relieve MJF not only of the world title, but would relieve him of the main event status as a means to rest up and heal. Swerve, now plugged in as that top babyface, is now the world champion. Samoa Joe, by all means, is a great wrestler. And I do think he's earned that accolade of being the AEW World Champion. But... In hindsight, I feel like this might go as a transitional reign. I don't think it's right. I don't think it's fair. But on paper, when you look at it, that's very much what it is. I do think we can expect maybe a rematch, perhaps, between the two, just because of the high-profile status that it would bring to maybe an episode of Dynamite. I do not see it going over to Double or Nothing, though. I do think we find a fresh opponent for Swerve, or we revisit that Hangman Adam Page matchup. That, of course, is yet to be seen, and we'll have to wait for this upcoming AEW Dynamite episode. And speaking of title matchups, the match that preceded the main event was the AEW World Tag Team titles in a ladder match, as FTR would face off against the Young Bucks, Nicholas 
and Matthew Jackson. In a match that, of course, I thought everyone expected to deliver, not only given the talent that was involved in the matchup, but the stipulation as well. When have the Young Bucks ever had a bad ladder match? And to see the story that they have told with FTR over the course of these last few years, this, of course, being the fourth matchup within their saga, but also the inclusion of the all-in footage that was shown a couple weeks ago. I myself found them questionable, in bringing in that footage because it had happened, what, eight months ago. We were past it. CM Punk is now with the WWE. And in essence, on that night, the only person they got over was CM Punk because the next time we saw the Bucks on that episode of Dynamite, they were cheering for CM Punk. They weren't cheering for FTR and they weren't booing the Bucks. They were cheering for the one guy in this scenario that was with the other company. Now, many had speculated whether or not the Bucks would emerge victorious and if it would be a clean victory. But given uh, given the way that they've been booked as heels, I can't say I'm surprised by the ending. I mean, if you look back at the predictions video, as I mentioned, I did say that Jack Perry, there was a possibility he would be interfering in this matchup and costing FTR that title win. I am a fan of the way they had executed this. He comes through the audience with the mask and a hoodie. They, the, the announcers pronounce him as a fan a fan has entered the ring and is disrupting this great title matchup and security jumps right on it and they basically detain him in the corner of the ring they remove the mask to show jungle 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 boy jack perry essentially i think it was done well um was it predictable sure but sometimes the correct answer is the obvious answer and to see what the bucks have done with this heel turn they really have played up the heel character this hammy version of themselves quite well in all in all honesty i know some people aren't really a fans um as them portraying themselves as the evps but it works well and if it works well on tv why not keep doing it i am curious to see what they do with you know jack perry because as he was being taken away after his um his interference in the match he threw up the elite sign is this hinting perhaps him joining the elite with the Young Bucks and Okada. Will we see another alliance between the two? I mean, the Young Bucks have been glowing over Jack Perry as he's another kid from California who's misunderstood, as they mentioned. I wouldn't be surprised if they included him in the Elite. They've been mentioning him and and hinting him uh, for a couple weeks now. I think it would be a perfect fit. But again, long term, I'm wondering where it would lead to. Does Do we get a title match for a Jack Perry? Whether it's for the world title or whether it's for the TNT title, who knows? Maybe he even challenges for the international championship. I don't know. But I'm always looking forward, and I'm interested to see where they move with the Bucks. Now that they're three-time champions, how is this reign going to go? Is it going to be like a reign of terror where it was like Triple H in the mid-2000s where they're just taking out all tag teams because they're the best tag teams, and now they're portraying themselves as the EVPs? So essentially, they have the power to hold on to that title for as long as they want, really. Of course, in kayfabe, I'm sure behind the scenes, they're more than willing to work with anybody in that company, certainly given their status and, you know, how the CM Punk situation ended. But the match that I was really looking forward to, and truthfully, was the match that I bought the pay-per-view for. Brian Danielson versus Will Ospreay in what was easily the match of the night and quite easily could be match of the year and i love that we're able to throw out that phrase so often nowadays in today's world of pro wrestling because you just saw wrestlemania had a couple of match of the year candidates we've seen of course AEW side we've seen all over the place wrestling as is in its boom period again you can see in other videos how excited and how expressive i've become over this boom period because now wrestling is just at an all-time high that we haven't seen for some time now and to see two stars the quality of a brian danielson will osprey the matchup they told a clean matchup no interference needed just two of the best in the business brawling it out displaying their level of athleticism their skill in psychology and also the respect that they carry for this beautiful sport. Ultimately, Will Ospreay would emerge victorious in a back-and-forth exchange that will surely go down as one of the greatest finishes, certainly in AEW history. But what many people are now asking is the health of a Brian Danielson. 
he took a good bump towards the end of the match and obviously had you know the finish executed on him and would lose the match. But to see the training staff, the referee, and Will Ospreay kind of take a moment to check on him. At first, I thought, you know, he's fine. You know, he's working the angle. It's Brian Danielson. He's an ultimate professional. But then the body language of everyone there really got you thinking. And I was explaining this to my younger sister who had walked in the room while watching this. I said, sometimes it's hard to tell between what's a work and what's a shoot. Because if this was a work, they did it really well. I'm talking body language. I'm talking execution. If it wasn't a work and this was legit, this was a shoot. I'm worried about his health, of course, especially given the amount of injuries he's had in the past. Brian Danielson is always someone that I'm concerned about. But then I asked myself, if this was a legitimate injury, surely the production team, surely the camera crew would air replays. They would get away from the uh, the training staff evaluating him. You don't show that kind of stuff for the very same reason where during an NFL game, if a player gets injured, yeah, they show it for a second, but we immediately cut to a commercial break just to give them a little bit of space and respect in terms of their health and, and their injuries. Um, so I personally don't believe Danielson's hurt. Uh, that would, that's probably me just being optimistic. But the match, again, that, they, that those two had put on, tremendous. If you haven't checked it out, obviously the event just happened. If you haven't checked it out, you have to. If you love Brian Danielson, if you're a fan of Will Ospreay, this is certainly a match that will go up there. I wouldn't be surprised if a, cer if a certain Dave Meltzer doesn't give it like six stars, just knowing how much of a fan he is of both of these guys. Um, certainly match of the night, as I mentioned. But we go from a positive to what many, including myself, would consider a negative, And I find it very questionable. In fact, this video was originally intended to be just about this matchup, but I had feelings about the other matches that had taken place on the pay-per-view, so I decided to include that as well. Of course, the match I'm referring to is the FTW Championship matchup between the defending Hook versus Chris Jericho. Now, many times in professional wrestling, the beautiful aspect of it all is how we can pay it forward. When we're able to have an established veteran who has built up the equity and the status of a legend, and can therefore put over a young talent, therefore transferring that value, that equity, to a young and up-and-coming star, you can't beat it. It's the circle of life. Now, of course, Chris Jericho already suffered a loss to Hook a couple weeks ago, and part of me wanted to think Hook would just beat him again and retain the FTW championship, but there was that thought in the back of my mind, what if they give him this win back? that 50-50 booking. And ultimately, that's what they did. But I asked myself more questions than seeing answers when it comes to this. Why do you have Chris Jericho beat Hook? What do they get out of this? Because now, let's assume two different scenarios. One, the reason Hook lost is because he's on his way out. Reports have been saying that he's interested in testing free agency with a lot of people pegging NXT as one of those landing spots. Now, me, myself, personally, I would love to see Hook in NXT. I would love to see him in the WWE. But if he loses this matchup and he loses that title, is that almost an incentive, almost a, a hint as to where he's going? And let's just assume he's not leaving. Let's assume Hook is actually staying with the company. Well, where do you go from here now? Does he face Chris Jericho and just win the title back, essentially nullifying this matchup? Or does Chris Jericho hold on to the title? The title is not even recognized as a legitimate championship, a, a sanctioned championship. So is Jericho just the FTW champion? Where do we go with Hook? Does he become a main eventer? Does he challenge for the world title again? He just did a couple weeks ago. And then, of course, as I mentioned, Jericho with the unsanctioned title, does he drop the title altogether? Are we retiring the FTW title? I'm sure they have something in mind. I'm certainly baffled and confused by this booking. But one thing that was also really interesting is to see how quick the crowd turns on Chris Jericho. Now, gradually, over the last couple of years, we've seen how fans have kind of grown tiresome regarding the Chris Jericho gimmick. And the one thing that really prided 
us as fans of Chris Jericho was his ability to adapt, to change. He would leave at times and then come back with a new revamped or tweaked gimmick of his, whether it was Y2J, whether it was that 2008 heel run, or even The List in 2016 and 17. But to see what many people are referring to as the vortex of Jericho, where you seemingly get stuck in a vortex and you're sunken into a place of obscurity. These last few years, that's basically what it's been for Chris Jericho. And it's a shame because I grew up a huge Y2J fan. He was very, you know, eccentric. He had all the personality in the world, not to mention the athletic the athletic talent that he was able to present within every match. But to see how he's fallen off, especially with his connection with the audience, is not a welcome sight. There were times in this match that people were chanting, Fozzie sucks. They were saying, please retire. Go away, Jericho. Like, those are not good things. That's not even good heat. That's not what you want, you know, being cheered at you as a heel. That's simply go away heat. That's where people just don't care and they don't want to see you. You've seen it with certain characters like a Baron Corbin. Of course, X-Pac was a very popular one who they developed as X-Pac Heat. But to see what has happened with a Hall of Fame level legend like a Chris Jericho, I think ultimately the remedy is he needs to go away for a little bit. He needs to take time off, go on tour with Fozzie, hang out with the family, write another book, do something. Because the more he stays on camera, beating the likes of a Sammy Guevara, of a Hook, not to mention other stars he's been in the past. What are we doing? He hasn't really had monumentum of a, of a run since his days of Le Champion when he won the AEW world title at the very beginning of AEW Dynamite. Like I said, I don't know what they're going to do with this FTW run. I'm curious to see what they do with Hook. Is Hook leaving the NXT? Is he staying? And if he is, what's the end game? Of course, other matches on the card would include the AEW Women's World Champion, Tony Storm defeating Thunder Rosa, and was one and what was one of the best women's championship matches in a while. I thought it was a great matchup, it told a great story. Ultimately, it wasn't time for Tony to drop that title. So now we progress moving forward with her next challenger, no matter who that is. And speaking of women's matches, it's now official. Double or nothing, we'll have the matchup. Willow Nightingale defending the TBS championship against Mercedes Monet. And in the opening of this pay-per-view, we saw Okada successfully retain the Continental Championship against Pac in what was, I thought, a great opener. And it really set the tone for what the pay-per-view was going to be like. Overall, I think AEW Dynasty was a great pay-per-view. I thought it was a success. It was certainly a win that they really needed in these last few weeks. So now as we build toward AEW Double or Nothing, as well as All In in Wembley Stadium in August, keep an eye out on these champions. Keep an eye out on Swerve, on Tony Storm. Obviously keep an eye out on Will Ospreay because I think he's going to be elevated to the world title scene by the time we get to All In. The FTW champion Chris Jericho. Where do we move forward with Hook? How are we going to address the return of guys like Hangman out of Page, like an MJF? And Adam Cole, who we saw in this pay-per-view, seemed to be healthy, 100%. He was able to lift himself off of that wheelchair that he's been riding for the last year and a half, essentially, on and off of injury. AEW Dynasty, as I mentioned, I thought was a success. But what did you guys think about AEW Dynasty? Which match was your favorite? And what storylines are you looking forward to the most as we progress towards Double or Nothing? Of course, my name is Jose Ramos Jr. I appreciate you guys joining me on this video regarding AEW Dynasty. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe to keep up to date with the wrestling content that I produce. And with that being said, I will see you guys in the next video.